We're back in the SolidWorks live booth, and I'm joined here by Dr. Matt Carney. Hey, Matt. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. So you had the opportunity this morning to present in front of a very large audience yes. of engineers. Um, you're a little bit different of an engineer. You're a biomechatronics engineer, right? Yep. yep. So I got to ask, you know, a lot of folks, uh, you know, they want to become a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer. That sounds like a very specific kind of field you decided yeah, to get Yeah, so into, it's a very right? specific specialization. I'm, I'm actually trained as a mechanical engineer. My, I, my first a couple degrees in mechanical engineering and then electronics was always a hobby of mine because going all the way back to when I was like seven years old, I've wanted to build humanoid robots for some reason. And I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so I realized that the mechanical part's really what comes naturally to me, building machines, cutting metal, assembling things, testing things, breaking things. Uh, but I realized that electronics and programming are crucial to actually tie the entire system together and actually make things move. And so uh, I studied it, studied mechanical engineering, got a master's in it in addition to a bachelor's, and then worked at a lot of different companies over the years where I really kind of developed skills in surface modeling, uh, you know, doing FEA, learning about power electronics, and then starting to realize that those electronics I needed to build more and more of. And ultimately, I found myself at MIT in the biomechatronics lab where I take mechanical, electrical, and combine it with biomechanics so that we can build the most humanoid of robots, which are uh, powered prostheses. Yeah, I mean, you were literally augmenting the human's capability. I mean, that's the goal. The, the, the aim is not only end physical disability, but to actually go beyond that and actually augment biology, meaning better than biology performance. And I, I would say we're on the cusp of it at this point. And you're focused specifically on lower extremities, you had mentioned, but the future could hold anything at that yeah, point, Yeah, I mean, right? the, the mechatronic systems all are, you know, it's the same throughout your body. Our lab has focused on uh, lower extremity prostheses, primarily because our lab director, Hugh Hare, is... Uh, uh, has has been leading the charge on that. And he himself is a bilateral baloney amputee. And so that so it's great because we can test immediately and quickly with him. Uh, but the same ideas of neuromuscular control, uh, tight integration of mechatronic systems, uh, building power dense actuators, all that applies to upper or lower body. Uh, it, it, the, the difference in the controls is that in in lower extremity amputee uh, lower extremity prostheses, the gait is a, the cyclical motion that is you can. It actually is a relatively simple controller that you can use to actually get a system walking with someone. Whereas, uh, I mean, the difficulty is like every step matters. Like the system cannot fail because every step you are you're catapulting yourself with the previous leg, and if your f leg lands and doesn't do what you expect it to do, you fall over, and that that's not acceptable. Uh, it's also very high power systems. You'd be surprised that your body is putting out something like 300 watts per step just on normal walking over 150 Newton meters of torque. Those are big loads just at your ankle. Uh, whereas uh, for upper body, you know, dexterity is more important. There's more degrees of freedom. But if you drop a, a cup, it's not the, you're not knocking your teeth out by accident. But if you trip and fall while you're walking, something much more severe can happen. Sure. So how do you solve some of these challenges? So you, you look at these, these massive loads, the dynamic motion that's taking place. I think what's interesting is not only were you a keynote speaker here this morning, you're, you're an engineer. You use the design tools that all the people in the audience use. Yep. You use these tools to solve some of the problems. I think you had talked off camera earlier. Yep. You're really integrating with some electrical, electrical engineering tools, things like that. Talk a little bit about some of the design challenges you faced and how some of the SolidWorks tools have helped solve those. Yeah, so I've been using SolidWorks for, I think, 16 years now. Um, and, and so I, I've, and I've learned from both working in humanoid robotics and product design how to kind of do like top-down modeling, master modeling, and surface modeling to really tightly integrate systems together. Um, let's see, I, I should take a step back. So there, there's the modeling side of things, and there's also just the component specification. So in engineering school, they always say use as much off-the-shelf components sure. as possible, but it does not apply when you're building humanoid systems because you need things as small and light as possible. And so you, they're just, we're just, you know, a, a bearing stack from an axle in a car does not fit in your ankle because <laughs> that thing's gigantic. And, and I need something that's small, but it still has very high loads, 4,000 plus newtons on, um, which is like close to 1,000 pounds of force on the, some of these bearings. And so, you know, my process is I, I take walking data. So I actually have a bunch of motion capture system that has been put on, uh, we have like markers on body, parts of a body. Someone walks, we measure the motion, the kinematics of their motion, as well as the kinetics, the reaction forces, calculate joint torques, 
feed that into a simulation that is a mathematical, like a numerical model that simulates how the actuator is going to behave. And then I run optimization, sorting through different motors uh, and combinations of drivetrains, springs. Um, and, and from that, I look at, and motors combos, and I look at what the minimum energy configuration of components allows me to achieve some desired trajectories. And I then take that component specification, and then I'm manually searching to find components that actually achieve these uh, components' uh, capabilities. I then take that and start doing studies in SolidWorks. And that's where I get into, I use a master model to assemble everything, so I know where my, where my joints are going to be, where my bearings are going to be. Uh, I was able to, uh, for instance, build up my entire motor stack and send that out to manufacture before I even finish designing sure. the rest of the system. But then I'm then using FEA to evaluate, you know, how can I make the smallest possible components uh, while still uh, surviving not just the loads, but fatigue loads, so that the system is actually going to continue to walk. It will be durable. And, and yeah, so I designed it for a 200-pound person running every step every day for four years. That was kind of my design constraint. Well, so there's some uh, pretty extreme specifications. That yeah, well, it, they are pretty extreme, and it's hard to hit all of those, but at the same time, you know, we want to push the limits of what's actually possible. And what that means is, yes, that's a very long fatigue life, but what that also means is someone smaller or lighter weight can put, hammer the system much harder. Because we want to go beyond biology, not just like what is the baseline, just flat ground, level ground walking, but I want people to be hiking and, and jumping and doing much more extreme activities. And that's why when we take these tools and integrate them together, allowing me to, you know, figure out, you know, using the Altium tool where I can put electronics into my CAD model and move, com move capacitors around. Like I have it uh, in the system, I, you know, the whole frame of the system sits there. The electronics are actually mounted inside of it. And as the, uh, the linkage moves through its range of motion, I'm actually able to, I was actually able to make it so it moves right between the electronics. Wow, Things so like you're that. literally, the electronics are comp so in integrated, so tightly integrated that you're literally doing dynamic clearances to yeah. avoid those electronic components yeah, and all the, on that PCB. Exactly, and, and the, the system I built is something called a reaction force series elastic actuator, and so that means the motor itself is moving around as well, so I actually had to trace the path of the motion of that and clear material away from that. That's why it, part of the reason it has this very aggressive aesthetic in the design is that it has this, uh, these carve-outs for the motion of these different components. And then I also use uh, the, the structure itself as the heat sink. So that further allows me to reduce the size of things by putting the power electronics directly into the, the, uh, the aluminum structure. So you're really optimizing design. And you know, I mentioned a moment ago, you were on stage as a keynote presenter, but you had told me it was but a couple years ago, you were actually coming to this event as an attendee to, to learn and advance your skills with tools like SolidWorks, right? Uh, yeah, totally. So, I mean, I use a lot of stuff. I use, uh, I do a lot of surface modeling. Like I mentioned, uh, I do master modeling, so top-down modeling. Um, I use PDM for document control, so I, I kind of manage the whole mechatronics team in our group and to make sure that uh, m multiple people can either be working on a single system or at least we're tracking everyone's progress. We have undergraduates who come in and help work on parts, and so it's a really nice way to do teamwork. Um, I, of course, I do FEA, so I've done some thermal stuff as well as a lot of structural things. Um, I'm forgetting what other tools I use, but yeah, it, it's been a lot. I, I, I learned some of that, some of those capabilities from be coming here and going to some of these different sessions. The breakout sessions. For folks who are watching at home who've never been to a 3D Experience World, I mean, do you have any, you have anything you, you tell them, encourage them to go? Like, what are some of the highlights when you come here? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool to see everything that's going on. One, like here we're in the playground area right now, and you can see what the different add-ons that people have been building, or companies have been building to enable to expand the capability. Uh, now we're seeing a lot more of the VR, AR type of applications. Yeah. Um, and I, I think going to the general sessions, that was the thing that I was most excited about uh, previously, and I'm also excited about, again, uh, attending some of them this session, because you know, it's just, you know, I, I find I have muscle memory for a lot of the things I do in SolidWorks, uh, but sometimes I don't explore all the other options or possibilities because I've got a thing that I know works and I just got to get it done. <laughs> but this is a good opportunity to learn those other skills and, and bring those in so that you can uh, just be even Stream, more effective. Streamline your performance, you know, gain more more time out of your day so you can focus more on the that innovative process as opposed yeah, to... Yeah, and I, and I think what's cool with 3D experience is that more and more of the tools are coming into one, uh, w a single environment, and so it streamlines that whole process, and understanding yeah. how all that works together is really valuable. 
So we have a lot of keynote speakers that come here, they present in front of our audience, and you know, that, that's what their role is here. Are you going to hang around and actually attend uh, 3D Experience World? Yeah, I'll be here? here the next couple of days, and I'm definitely planning on catching some sessions and checking out that's everything really else. Cool. Well, Matt, this was really cool uh, opportunity to talk to you as both a, a presenter and an amazing user. I mean, the story is really cool. Uh, can people learn more about what you're doing at MIT somewhere? Yeah, so we're the MIT Media Lab Biomechatronics Group. Uh, I just finished my PhD there. I'm now a postdoc, but we have about 30 students working on everything from the mechatronics, the robots, the mechanical interface, which are sockets, and neural interfaces, so how you actually control the robot directly from, uh, from, your, from your mind. Uh, so if you do a search for Biomechatronics MIT Media Lab, you'll, you'll find us. Very cool. Matt, thanks so much for taking the time to My join pleasure. us here at SolidWorks Live at 3D Experience World 2020. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the Dassault Systems booth and how all the technologies on the 3D Experience platform are being used together on the prosthetic foot we saw earlier this morning at General Session as well. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.